I declare that no one under the sound of my voice will return back the same. I decree and declare that while you hear the word tonight, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let yokes be broken in the name of Jesus. You hear me? Before you sit down, let me prophesy over someone's life. Every barrier standing the way of your destiny that will not let you go forward. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, let it be broken right now. 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 What your father could not do, what your elder ones could not do, something that has never been done in the history of where you come from, may my God, who is also your God, push you to that level of achievement. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? Anyone who has laughed at you and mocked you to say, where is your God? In their lifetime, God will lift you before their very eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Every grace, every oil that belongs to your destiny and is yet to rest upon your life. In this conference, I call upon the God of heaven. May that anointing rest upon your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please hear me. In one minute before you sit down, without distraction, lift your voice and cry to the God of heaven. Lord, give me a visitation right now. Go ahead, lift your voice. Pray. 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 Give me a visitation. In the name of Jesus. Give me a visitation. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Is someone praying? Cry to the Lord your maker. Give me an encounter like Jacob. Give me an encounter like Paul. Give me an encounter that will turn my life around. to Jesus thou son of David for the sake of my destiny thou son of David for the sake of my family thou son of David for the sake of the divine mandate upon my life visit me tonight give me an encounter hallelujah Please be seated. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. We have a very brief session. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Now please, I'd like you to listen carefully. And I pray and hope that you have something to write. Because everything that is of worth is worth penning down. Is worth writing. It says, right, for these words are faithful and true. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This was at a time in the life of Joshua where Moses had died and the baton of leadership 
had been handed over to this young man Joshua he was not used to what he was about to do until that time it was Moses who had led over 2.5 million people from Egypt the land of slavery the land of captivity and their destiny was to go to a land flowing with milk and honey but for some reason Moses was not able to finish up the assignment and the baton was given to Joshua Joshua like any other person was afraid confused and wondering if he would be able to not only handle that baton but to handle it effectively and then the Lord gave him a set of instructions and one of them tonight will be the basis for a brief discussion and then we pray Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 here's what it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success if that is you say amen so God himself is giving Joshua the formula to not only be successful but to be successful in an exceptional way please listen to me very carefully everyone in Christ everyone in Christ has an enviable destiny a destiny of color a destiny of grace the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. He says they are thoughts of peace. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. And not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. The Bible also says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. Are we still together? in deuteronomy chapter 28 when you read from verse 1 and 2 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you there are no low callings in christ everybody in Christ is a high flyer everybody in Christ is a champion regardless your background regardless what happened or what did not happen so I want to establish tonight that there is no one sitting under the sound of my voice who is number one a biological accident number two a failure every one of us who names the name of Christ has been called into the kingdom of victory are we together until you believe this you will never truly be able to succeed he said son of man what seest thou and he said I see the rod of an album tree he said you have seen correctly that means a man can see wrongly a man can perceive wrongly until you believe that when you are grafted into Christ through salvation through the new birth that there is no failure for you because you are one with Jesus you can fail alone but you and Jesus cannot fail together because you see we live in a world where people can interpret your destiny based on your background based on your past based on the disadvantages that may have surrounded your 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 sociological context but my bible and your bible says that we have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation is a call to victory 
Joshua is about to begin to manifest the reality of his destiny and here was an instruction you would think the Lord would teach him about physical skill alone you would think the Lord would teach him about exceptional leadership principles as useful as that is look at the emphasis of God to Joshua one more time chapter 1 and verse 8 that a man's success starts with a book this book not this idea not this suggestion not what social media says this book of the law this book that contains the mysteries of the kingdom he says do not let it depart from your mouth you shall meditate therein consistently day and night means consistently and then having meditated upon it you must obtain grace to live in keeping with the truth therein he says if you do that it leaves you with a guarantee that your ways will be prosperous and you will have good success the real secret please hear me the real secret to an excelling life the real secret to a life of victory more than what you studied more than the advantage that family and territory can bring the real secret in this kingdom to a life of victory please hear me is the word of god the bible says in genesis chapter one in the beginning was the word in the beginning where there was no professor where there was no internet where there was no politician where there was no stratification of any sort in the beginning was the word that means there is nobody who truly begins to succeed if you ignore the power and the supremacy of the word john chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word i i i quoted john I meant to say forgive me Genesis 1 verse 1 says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth John 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word and that word was with God and the word was God hear what it says the same was in the beginning with God verse 2 verse 3 says it says all things everybody say all things shout it say all things all things means your promotion your influence your excelling your longevity your prosperity your dominion your influence all things were made by him and without him that means outside of the influence of the world was not anything made that was made the Word of God is the maker of enviable destinies it is true that we have been called into a life of victory a life of grace but listen carefully walking in the reality of that prophetic word depends on our encounter with the word of god that means in as much as you have great prophecies over your life it does not automatically mean that you will step into the reality of the same just because a prophetic word came over your life that you have a great destiny that you have a beautiful destiny just because the bible attests to the fact that there is greatness within you it does not mean that by default you will become great you must have an encounter with the word of god now write this down very quickly what is the word of god just a few minutes to begin as a background what exactly is the word of god because if you do not know what the word of god is then you may never be able to walk in the reality of the same what is the word of god the word of god referred to the thoughts and the intents of god the word of god the word logos 
where we translate as word means the thoughts of a man that seeks expression I will give you very quickly for sake of time three definitions of the Word of God are you ready number one the Word of God is an expression of God himself that's what the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 1 the Bible tells us in the beginning was the Word the Word was with God and the Word was God the same was with God in the beginning in Revelation chapter 19 when you read the Bible talks about a rider upon a horse whose name was written on his thigh and his name is the Word of God in first John chapter 1 verse 2 apologies I'm rushing because of time first John chapter 1 verse 2 the Bible also talks to us about the Word of God from the beginning that which we have seen so the Word of God is an expression of God himself an expression of the thoughts of God an expression of the character of God number two the Word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer this is a very important definition the Word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer that means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision and the allowance that the Word of God provides God is almighty God is great but he has limited his operation with man to the provisions that the word allows the Bible declares that he exalts the word even above his name above his reputation the word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer number three very quickly what is the word of God the word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation his methodology we call it the wisdom of God the Word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation his methodology that means the Word of God reveals how God functions it is the manual that shows you how God functions his modus operandi his system of operation are we blessed three definitions I've given you very quickly that the Word of God is an expression of God himself his thoughts and his character number two that the Word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer and then number three that the Word of God is a revelation of his system his methodology how he works now I want you to write this down every time you open the Bible principally the Bible contains three things write it down please everyone who is born again and a child of God must know this these are foundational doctrines and pillars of the Christian faith that translate to your victory in this kingdom the Word of God contains three things every time you open your Bible every time you study your bible there are three things that you are seeking for number one the word of god contains promises please say promises and then you write it down the word of god contains promises what are promises promises represents god's commitment the things that he has said he will do now you see the way God works is that he never does what he has not said if God has not said it there is no basis for committing him to do it Genesis chapter 21 please and verse 1 write it for reference Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1 Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1 this is a prophetic word concerning what God did to Sarah the Bible says and the Lord visited Sarah and he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken he visited Sarah as he has said he did unto Sarah as he has spoken anything God has not said 
anything God has not spoken cannot happen. There is no possibility for making it happen. Is someone learning now? So every time you pick up your Bible and you open it, hidden in this Bible are the promises of God. The old hymn says, standing on the promises of God. You can stand upon his promises. God, this is what you said concerning me. God, this is what you said concerning my destiny. There are promises in this scripture. For instance, the Bible says here, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say at the Lord. So he has said it. The thoughts of good or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Therefore, I have a future and I have an expected end. And I can place a demand on the integrity of God to make that happen. Why? Because he said it. Are you learning now? Now, please hear me. Many believers wish for a great destiny. They superstitiously hope that a great destiny will just appear. A great destiny is engaged by understanding. You have to know what God has promised you so that you can place a demand on it. Everybody say promises. Shout it. Let the devil hear you say promises. There are many things that God had promised Joshua Selman here. I don't know about you, but the Bible is full of promises that God said concerning me. For instance, he says that the fullness of my days I will fulfill. So based on that promise, no power in existence sustains the ability to cut me short before my life. You have to believe this. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is only what you believe that happens to you. I have believed from scripture according to the promises of God that nations, kings, Gentiles will come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Someone shout, I believe. The promises of God are dependable. The second thing we find from scripture, please write it down. The second thing we find from scripture are principles everyone write it and say principles the principles of the kingdom are called the secrets of the Lord the principles of the kingdom are called the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 Matthew 13 and verse 11 very quickly Jesus was teaching and here's what he said it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people for instance in the military there are certain mysteries and languages that only a military man can understand am i right on that mysteries if you come into a man's house there is a way that they operate in that house the man does not need to announce to your hearing madam go and bring our visitor a bottle of minerals they have mysteries they have a way they communicate there is a way he can look at his wife and the wife understands what he's saying you who is a stranger will not understand but they who are in the house understand that mystery can i tell you this in this kingdom there are mysteries by which we rise for instance the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty it's a mystery because if you are not in the kingdom you cannot understand why giving and increase is the same for instance in this kingdom you learn that you can dance your way to victory it's a mystery because it does not make sense until you are in the kingdom for instance in this kingdom we are taught that your words carry power and that you can speak life and use words to create your destiny is a mystery because anyone who is not a child of god and not in this kingdom cannot understand everybody say principles the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to come upon you and open you to the mysteries of the kingdom 
can I tell you this? Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is your resultant, the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries, the principles of the kingdom. If you do not understand the principles of the kingdom, you will find out that you remain a victim of situations and circumstances. Influence and lifting has biblical principles. For instance, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. So when you focus on exalting Jesus, you focus on making his name known, you focus on letting people see him instead of you, your reward is that the more you lift him, you rise higher as he rises higher too. Are we together? So every time I'm giving you the keys very briefly before we pray, you want to live an excelling life? It is not by superstition. It is not by hoping and wishing. No. You must search here for the principles of the kingdom. Contained in this Bible are promises, God's commitment to you. Contained in this Bible are principles. These principles are scattered in stories. These principles are scattered in parables. These principles are scattered in all kinds of theological exegesis. May you find these principles in the name of Jesus Christ. Now please look up. There is a principle that controls wealth and abundance. There is a principle that controls speed. There is a principle that controls restoration. There is a principle that controls exaltation. There is a principle that controls divine health. There is a principle that controls dominion over principalities and powers. My question tonight is which one do you not know? The Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. But verse 7 says, you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Everyone shout after me, say in the name of Jesus. From tonight, I obtain grace to know the principles of the kingdom. I obtain grace to know the principles of the kingdom. Please sit down. Twice Jesus cried in the Bible. Just a few minutes and we'll wrap up. There are two times we see that Jesus wept in scripture. Number one was in the book of John chapter 11. When you read from verse 35. He wept when he came to the grave of Lazarus. And they said, oh how he loved him. But the second time that Jesus wept in scripture was when he stood over Jerusalem and the Bible says he wept and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had known, even in this day, your time, the things that make for your peace, he says, but they are hidden from your eyes. Can I tell you this? Every result you desire in this kingdom, there is a mystery that connects you to it. Merely wanting the result will frustrate you. You must find out the principle it takes. Apostle, I want to be great. I came from a family where no one has risen. You are not the first. Ask Abraham. Abraham came from a family of idol worshippers or of the Chaldeans. But God called him. Gideon from a family, defeated family. You are not the first to come out of a family of disadvantage. Apostle, I've lost everything through the pandemic. You are not the first to lose. Ask Job. Job lost everything. But the Bible tells us again in chapter 42 from verse 10 to 12 that God restored the fortunes of Job. Let me prophesy over someone here. Everything that has left you that should not leave you in this conference by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we call it back to your destiny. We call it back to your destiny. Please sit down. Can I tell you this? When you see our father in the Lord stand like this, 
and declare over your life that in the name of Jesus it is well with you and it looks casual and doors open he's not just speaking there is a principle that supports what he's saying for instance where the word of a king is there is if you are not a king and you speak there will not be power the, before you speak verify whether you know the revelation the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that he has made us a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign on earth can I challenge you therefore utilize the moment of this conference don't just sit down and listen to speaker after speaker alone and close your book and go back. cry unto the Lord and ask him Lord what principle do I not know that may be tying me down what principle do I not know that is making the devil look victorious over my life your assignment in this conference is to be like a spiritual archaeologist searching for the missing link to the next level of your life number three and we wrap up for tonight the third thing we find in scripture are prophecies promises principles prophecies prophecies give us a roadmap to the future why so that there will not be fear again as we leave it gives us a roadmap to our own future here in this life and even in the life after this is total victory for the believer so we know that whether in this life or in the afterlife we still are victorious because we have searched the end of it and we have seen that even in the end according to prophecy we remain victorious this is the believers hope the Bible says if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable so in as much as we excel and we reign in this life we have hope through prophecy the Bible lets us know that one day not a parable that it will happen we are going to hear the trump of God sound is it in your Bible or have you stopped reading it and it says that we the dead in Christ will arise first for instance and that we who are alive and remain we will be caught up and we will meet him in the air never to be separated again the Bible by prophecy tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth hallelujah the Bible tells us that a time is going to come where there will no longer be wars again where there will no longer be famine again where the wickedness of men will not find any expression again so it gives us hope everything that is happening in the earth today to the believer it should not be a surprise the bible already told us contained in scripture are principles contained in scripture are promise are, are, are promises and principles and prophecies can i tell you when you find the prophecies you can bring forth your strong reason when you find the principles you can obtain grace to walk in keeping with the principles the principles do not fail they are backed up by god's own integrity and then the promises give us hope and assurance so that we are not afraid we don't need to enter tomorrow to know what is there he already went as omega and he's brought back what tomorrow is and he's told us that we are victorious there is no anxiety there is no fear he's told us that we are victorious did he not say that a time will come when men say there is a casting down so he told you already that that time will come in Isaiah chapter 60 did he not tell you that the time will come when darkness will cover the earth and even cross darkness the people but he told you that upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise listen to me if you want exceeding expectation you want exceeding greatness a life that brings glory to the name of the Lord, the Lord a life that brings dignity to you a life that wipes away shame and reproach from your life and your family can I be honest with you 
do not make the mistake of Martha Martha was running around looking for so many things and Jesus said Martha you are this is we live in a world where people are running from pillar to post ignoring God and pursuing connections and all these things only find their value if you if the Word of God is in place in your life running from everywhere searching for salvation I came tonight as a first session to lift up the word of God to tell you again that this is not an ordinary book this was God's recommendation to a young man who was able to excel beyond imagination the Bible speaks about men who honor this word time will fail me he says to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions You can pay attention to what I've shared tonight and take it serious and begin to open this Bible searching for promises, searching for principles that make for an exceptional life or you may fold it as an intelligent preaching from a man of God and not do anything with it because the Bible says they had the word just like we did but it says the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith in them that had it. It says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them i'm hoping that the session that we have will have the time to share a few principles in detail because god is determined in this season to announce you god is determined in this season to see that everything that looks like reproach can i speak to you listen as i wrap up i want to tell you this do not let anyone talk you down and believe that just because you came from a background, you came from a place where no one seems to have celebrated you. Nobody in your family has risen to another level. And every time you aspire to rise so that Jesus be glorified in your life, the devil can come and speak to you and say, who have you seen do this in your family? Can I tell you this? By the grace of God, this conference seeks to not only give you enlightenment, but bring grace upon your life that moves you beyond your imagination. Can you spare one minute to pray? Please jump up on your feet. What is the prayer tonight? Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. This becomes our prayer as believers. One prayer point and we are done. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Colossae. And he prayed a prayer for them. Bowing his knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he mentioned three dimensions of knowledge. That must be the capture of our prayer tonight. That ye be filled number one with the knowledge of his will number two ye be filled with all wisdom and number three ye be filled with spiritual understanding that if these dimensions are captured in your christian experience it is impossible for you to fail you can fail if alone but i said you and jesus you and the world cannot fail together say after me father shout it again say father in the name of jesus i receive grace to contend for promises for principles for prophecies through the word of god lift your voice and pray i obtain grace for the sake of my destiny for the sake of my lifting i obtain grace i obtain grace to search for promises the promises that represent the boundary of your commitment to my life that god cannot be committed to the believer outside of what he has said the promises of god are a capture of how far he can go to lift you to bless you to honor you to reveal himself through you and then principles the ways of the kingdom the modus operandi of the kingdom then prophecies that drive away fear revealing your future to you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah now I pray for you tonight 
that in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God every promise of scripture that your eyes need to see that is connected to the next level of your destiny this night may my God open your eyes to see it may my God open your eyes to see it some of you it will be revealed to you in dreams while you sleep may my God open your eyes to see it the principles that you may have ignored that may have been responsible for stagnations and limitations of all sorts in the name of Jesus Christ may the light of God's word come tonight and open your eyes to understand those principles finally every manifestation of fear in your life by reason of the uncertainties of tomorrow I decree and declare let it disappear from your life forever hallelujah now apologize for taking our time but as we have been taught by our father in the Lord it may not be just to wrap up this meeting without making a very serious altar call now please listen very carefully most people trivialize altar calls because they think it's just a religious activity can I tell you this it will be impossible to believe that everyone coming here has taken God seriously remember the formula Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning God not in the beginning breakthrough not in the beginning prosperity I know we're out of time but someone's destiny for someone you may be the first person to make this decision in your family now hear me there are two categories of people I'm going to call the first is someone who came for this conference and you are saying apostle I have come sincerely I don't want to tell myself lies I need Jesus I have not made this decision sincerely and number two there are those who will say I remember giving my heart to Jesus Christ but honestly in the last one year things have gone haywire my life I cannot sincerely say I'm in a right relationship with Jesus I'm going to count one to five I like you to leave your seat if you belong to any of these categories run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here one are you celebrating them as they come run to Jesus two by the time we count one to five, we'll stop there. Run with passion to Jesus. Win that war of destiny tonight, once and for all. Don't sit back being ashamed. God is giving you a new beginning. Some of you are not just coming for yourselves. You are coming for your family. You are coming for your destiny. Are you running three? to Jesus apostle I want to come but I'm ashamed of my colleague leave them alone and run to Jesus I love you forever I love you forever I love you forever Lord I love you forever I love you forever I love you for if you're joining them please hurry up we're out of time I love you forever I love you forever I love you hallelujah now please listen to me all of you who are standing here I want you to mean it with Jesus let this not just be an emotional thing that you are just running to come the Bible says everyone who comes to him he will in no wise cast away lift your right hand high above your head and you who are watching from your homes you're watching via the internet you're watching through whatever platform you want to give your life to Jesus now is the moment of salvation I'd like you to join us as we pray this prayer lift your right hand high to heaven and i want you to say this loud and clear let it be from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem jesus is here say after me lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i declare that i cannot help myself 
I come to you just as I am. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I accept you as my Savior. I accept you as my Lord. I accept you as my King. The power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over my life. From today, I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for these ones. They have come in response to this call. No man is able to convict men except your spirit. And we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit even tonight. I decree and declare according to the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. And I declare that my God gives you a new beginning. From today, the power of sin, the power of Satan is broken over your life. Receive grace to walk in victory. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what, what you do. do. We Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a moon. Yes. We're in a moon. hallelujah now I truly believe with all my heart that your life is about to change this morning the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion you have come and he will not disappoint you in Jesus name now there are three things that will happen here in this session very quickly before we sit number one I'm going to be sharing with you something that is very powerful I believe that this is a secret that in addition to what you learned yesterday will put you in a position for perpetual victory in your life and then number two somewhere in the course of the meeting and it will be a brief one I am going to be praying for those who are sick and those who are trusting the Lord to lift all kinds of burdens from their lives and the third thing that I'm going to do is I truly believe in the power of impartation I believe there are many of you who have come with hunger in your hearts and I'm just going to stretch my hands and pray for you that something will come upon your destiny from heaven and will change your life forever now if you believe that i'd like you to find a neighbor and passionately pray in the next one minute father give us visitations i am agreeing with my neighbor and we declare that this morning session will indeed be a lifetime encounter is someone praying is someone praying open my eyes open my spirit the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. We have come to learn, we have come to grow, we have come to rise. Is 
in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray father again we pray that you visit us this morning we have come with our hearts hungry with our hearts desperate to receive let there be the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles and I pray oh God that everyone under the sound of my voice will be mightily impacted and imparted this morning that at the end of this session indeed you will say you have received a visitation may the Lord bless you for in the mighty name of Jesus I pray celebrate Jesus and please you may be seated hallelujah let me again request that you be as silent as you can be and get something to write even as we delve into the ministry of the word yesterday we began to talk about the power of the word according to joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 and its ability to set a man on course for a great and an enviable destiny we did establish yesterday how that it is in our destiny in Christ to be great to move from one dimension of glory even to another that in Christ there are no low callings everyone is called into not only a holy calling but a high calling a calling of nobility a calling of greatness but we also establish that greatness does not just happen by default that principally the word of god is god's instrument for the making of the great in this kingdom great men and great women whether in ministry in business in politics and governance in career in academics etc that everyone who is made in this kingdom is made by the word jesus who is the word said come follow me and i will make you so when you follow the word the word makes you hallelujah we also established yesterday by way of recap that essentially when we open up scripture to learn god we are interacting with three basic realities and that every time you open up your bible you are searching for three things principally number one promises a representation of god's boundary and his commitment to you number two principles the modus operandi of the kingdom god's system of operation you learn the principles of the kingdom you are able to reproduce god's dimension of results again and again and again and then number three prophecies prophecy that leaves us in hope it reveals to us the future the future of our destinies the future of the church the future of the world that we live in to the end that we find confidence and that we live without fear hallelujah this morning i like us to take it from there by reading our opening scripture for this morning deuteronomy chapter 30 please what i want to share with you deuteronomy 30 will read from verse 19 what you will be learning this morning has changed the lives of many 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 people is also responsible for the lifting the enviable lifting of the great in this kingdom businessmen have applied these principles and they have risen men and women of god have applied these principles and they have risen family career people have applied these principles and they have risen those in government have applied these principles and have risen now that you are about to hear it you will apply and also rise beyond imagination in the name of jesus by way of giving it a topic i will want to give you the topic choose life choose life deuteronomy chapter 30 please and verse 19 here's what it says i call heaven and earth to record this day against you 
that I have set before you life and death. I have set before you blessing and cursing. I cannot force you to choose, but here is my recommendation. Choose life that both you and your seed may live. Choose life that both you and your seed may live. The first thing that we see from this scripture is that the implication of your decisions and your choices move past and they go beyond you the bible here tells us that you are not the only one who is affected by your choices and your decisions that your choices and your decisions good or bad affect you and also affect your seed your seed there does not just mean your biological children alone your seed also refers to those who look up to you draw inspiration from you that your choices and your decisions in life does not just have an impact or an effect on you alone but it also transcends to your seed and even generations after you there are many people who seek to be marvelously used by god there are many people who seek to have enviable destinies there are many people who seek to become influences and influencers as far as the context of a generation is concerned but then many have ignored this principle that i want to teach you sadly to their detriment what i'm about to teach you is the reason why there are millionaires today and there are poor people what i'm about to teach you is the reason why there are intelligent people today and those who are supposedly non-entities what i'm about to teach you is the reason why people have risen from nothing to positions of notoriety and it's also the reason why people have dropped from positions of notoriety to nothingness what i'm about to teach you is the reason why many are marvelously anointed by god and many remain small and beggarly in life i'm teaching you this with passion from my heart as a contribution to your growth and your excelling in life and i'm praying and hoping that these words will not fall on deaf ears that they will come upon hearts that are malleable hearts that are ready to rise to grow to thrive and to excel even transgenerationally if that speaks about you say a very loud amen, amen. write this down your decisions comma more than your conditions decide the quality of your life your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life more than the conditions of a man the principal determinant of the kind and the quality of destiny that you and i will be able to be featured in is our decisions indecision is a decision to fail indecision is a decision to fail write this down please decisions decide destiny decisions not wishes not intentions decisions decide destiny a man's destiny the quality of it is not decided by his wish is not decided by his intentions he's not even decided by the wishes that others have for him your destiny is primarily and principally decided by the decisions that you make i learned this many years ago when i read a book by dr miles munro 
called discovering your potentials it was a book that had such a profound impact upon my life and it was from that book alongside many other teachings i found out that there is a responsibility dimension to an enviable destiny that more than a prophetic dimension more than the speakings of god over the life and the destiny of an individual there is a responsibility dimension there is a responsibility component to your destiny that means if you must excel in life as much as god desires for you to excel it does not just take god alone as powerful as he is it will take your partnership through the ability to make quality choices and decisions please look up everybody lend me your attention you are seated here this morning because you decided to be here is that true there probably are a number of things you would have been doing right now that may also hold some level of importance in your life but based on your perception of the value and the importance of this conference you left everything and many of you inconvenience yourself in a very great way to be here it is a decision you are hearing what you are hearing and sitting directly under this anointing and under this ministration because you decided to decisions are powerful look up please even at the extent of your eternal destiny god leaves you to decide at the detriment of your eternal destiny god the god of heaven will not force salvation on you the god of heaven will not force success on you there are many people today going to hell even though the price for sin the price for our victory the price for reconciliation with god has been fully paid their decisions there are many people who are living poor and beggarly lives even in the wealthiest of nations primarily because of their decisions when i found out the place and the role that decisions play in actualizing destiny i made up my mind that i will intentionally make quality decisions that advance my life write this down please destiny is measured in time write it down please destiny is measured in time that means the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you are giving a portion of your life and a portion of your destiny to anything at all good or bad whatever you invest your time in you are investing a portion of your life and your destiny our father in the lord today has become a global phenomenon and a voice a force to reckon with and a a personality to be studied by individuals by institutions government of nations not just because god called him not just because god anointed him but because he made a decision with his life that this was the course of destiny he was going to pursue and he obtained grace from god and even in old age he continues to pursue it diligently all of the people you see today that you admire whether in business whether in ministry whether in politics whether in the academia they are individuals who at one point or the other decided that they were going to make a quality decision to advance their lives a very interesting scripture in the bible i will just quote it for the sake of time every time i've studied this scripture that scripture for me is the most graphic representation of the power of decisions is a story that jesus himself gave a parable 
of one we call the prodigal son everybody say the prodigal son by way of summary the bible starts that story by letting us know that a man had two sons and he let us know that he was a responsible man who took care of his children and then one day the younger son the bible says made up his mind that he did not want to be under the influence of his father again a decision he made that decision and he said no father i i am tired of your influence give me that which is due me as your son and the father respected his decision the bible says when he was given his own portion of the inheritance he departed and the next thing we hear about that man is a plethora of tragedies the bible says he spent his money on a riotous life with friends and that man began to deplete for every decision he took out of the influence of his father it began to lead him and plunge him further and further to a life of shame embarrassment degradation until he got to a point where he was completely bankrupt are we still here and then the bible tells us that he got to a point where he was feeding with swine look at the implication of decisions this was a man who was excelling under the authority of his father but he made just one decision father i am tired of your influence i want to manage my life a few years down the line he has become an object of tragedy, a caution, and a warning to many. Feeding with swine, whereas he had been dining with royalty. But then the Bible also shows us the power of decisions to reverse a man's life. One day the Bible says this young man got tired and he said, to himself in fact the bible says he came to himself here's what he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here feeding with the swine and he made a decision again so it takes a decision to change a decision listen carefully he made one decision and that decision took him down but he made one other decision what was the decision i will arise and i will go to my father and when i meet him i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants he made that decision and he began to take steps to honor that decision now notice the miracle that happened he never met the father at home and the father never met him at the place of his wrong decision both of them met at the place of action somewhere in the middle the father was already leaving to look for him and the son can i be honest with you everything you are looking for is also looking for you the great destiny you are looking for is also looking for you but there is a version of you that destiny is looking for that you have not yet become the father was not looking for the rebel the father was looking for the transformed gentleman your destiny is not looking for the unserious careless like a desical individual is looking for a determined gentleman a determined lady everything you are looking for is looking for you the prosperity you are looking for is also looking for you the greatness you are looking for is also looking for you the mantle you are looking for is also looking for you but there are conditions midwifing your present condition and your future destiny is a decision you can make a decision that will reverse your destiny by many 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 years and you can take one decision that will fast track your destiny by many decades decisions are powerful i hope you know that in every territory there are a group of 
parliamentarians that we call honorable members of the house or senate members and all that happens in the parliament of every nation is decisions that's all they do decisions decisions that culminate to the well-being of the citizens within a territory or decisions that are motivated by self-centeredness that continue to take the nation or the territory backwards in any case people move forward or backward through decisions your decision is the vehicle that moves you from where you are to the place of destiny your decision is also the vehicle that takes you from where you are back to your yesterday now listen to me listen very carefully you do not have the power to choose consequences no man has the power to choose consequences a consequence is an outcome of a decision the resultant effect of a decision you cannot choose consequences good or bad what you can choose or what you can do is that you can make choices and decisions it is the decisions that choose your consequences for instance when you say i want to be rich um you are right but technically speaking you are not exactly right you don't just say i want to be rich alone you make the decisions that make for such a destiny and you naturally evolve into that state in life i want to be a visionary and responsible leader as good as that is if it just stops by you speaking and say, and staying there you may never amount to that which you desire it will take decisions as the vehicles that move you so men do not choose consequences you make decisions and the decisions decide the consequences that come to you for sake of time i want to give you six decisions they are major decisions that all champions without exception have made and continue to make in their lives and destinies whether you want to be a great man of god a great sportsman a great leader a great businessman you want to follow the steps of our father in the lord or any visionary leader world over that you seem to have admired can i tell you this these six decisions if understood if mastered and if you make these decisions consistently i give you a guarantee based on the integrity of scripture and the formidability of the laws of life you will not fail i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i cannot force you on what to choose but i can advise you if you want to live you live by choosing life are you ready for these decisions i want you to lay your hands on your head in one minute and pray from the depth of your heart let my spirit man be open to understand this truth as you are laying your hands on your head you are not only laying your hands on yourself you are laying your hands on all the destinies connected to you you are laying your hands on your children and your children's children you are laying your hands on the congregation that the lord will give you to pastor in the nearest future you are laying your hands on all the people who will be part of your company and your conglomerate is someone praying I obtain grace from God. Someone is praying. Grace from God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Decision number one. The first decision in this conference 
that I recommend for you to make if you want to surpass ordinary standards, if you want to excel, if you want to become a voice in this generation, if you want to serve the purposes of God effectively, is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress. Write it down. The first decision that you must make is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress. The decision to make exceptional spiritual progress. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. The Bible here says, And you shall seek me and find me if you seek me jeremiah chapter 9 let's look at verse 11 down to 13 i'm looking for the scripture that says you will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart 29 i meant to say not 9 forgive me 29 13 jeremiah chapter 29 and you will seek me and find me when ye shall search for me jeremiah 29 and verse 11 with all your heart everybody say all your heart there is a way a man can commit himself and make a decision that as far as my spiritual life is concerned my fire will never go down as far as my prayer life is concerned as far as my word study life is concerned as far as my passion for god is concerned the older i become the more on fire i become it's a choice there are many people today who have chosen not to be serious with god god respects their choice but you also will not get the destiny of one who is on fire with god can i tell you the truth righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne you cannot give god five minutes of your destiny and expect the mantle of one who gave god everything god is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 jesus himself was teaching and he began to encourage us based on that which was written in the law to love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind when you give god all and you make a decision to seek him and make quality spiritual progress I assure you, you have made a noble decision and you have begun to sign in for a destiny of greatness. Say amen. amen. Hear me. There are all kinds of distractions in our world today. Respectfully speaking, the abuse of social media, all kinds of mundane relationships that may not be pointing us towards destiny and all sorts of things that distract and destroy people i have said before you life and death every one of you at the sound of my voice and those following watching by way of internet social media by way of tv station i need you to know that the first decision in order of priority that you must make if you want to surpass ordinary standards and live an excelling life is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress everyone shout it after me say in the name of jesus from today i make up my mind to love jesus to seek jesus to pursue my spiritual progress without fail listen do you know what that means 
that means you must obtain grace and the discipline to wake up and pray when it is time to pray when your body tells you i am sleeping just hear the generations that you are sent to begging you and say wake up for our sake wake up for our sake wake up for our sake the healing anointing that must come to you in the place of prayer don't let sleep kill us the child that I'm supposed to receive is tied to your spiritual seriousness. Don't let me die barren. When you hear the voice of those who are calling on you, it gives you the energy to wake up. You hear me? Every time you feel lazy to study scripture, just remember that there is a multitude of people saying, please, if you do not feed us the witches and wizards and the yokes and the curses in our background will destroy us and God has tied our destiny to your life do not fail us can I tell you this if you do not live with a sense of destiny you will not have the passion to pursue your spiritual life you don't pray as a matter of convenience you don't fast as a matter of convenience many of us the enemy to your destiny is slumber you can sleep by eight and wake up by 12 as a young man no you will not go far god is not a herbalist you will not go far don't just keep admiring mantles and anointings behind mantles and anointings let me tell you the truth is 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 there is blood dripping on those altars Testaments of prayer, testaments of fire, testaments of fasting, testaments of staying with the word. The decision to be serious with God is not for men of God. The decision to be serious with God is for saviors. Provided you know that there is a destiny connected to you, it will jack you up to say, Lord, reveal yourself that mantle and that unction that must land upon my life for the sake of my generation i will pay whatever price it will take if you're still with me say amen. amen hear me for some of you here while you are listening to me the holy ghost is speaking to you and saying this is what i kept showing you in dreams this is what i've been trying to tell you that you need to step your spiritual life because where i'm sending you to the pace of your spiritual growth cannot build the stamina to stand before pharaoh can i tell you the truth what some of you call delay is not delay is that god has gauged you and seen that you are not strong enough to face what he's sending you to face so he will withdraw your progress to help you so that you do not collapse before pharaoh because you did not build capacity please sit down we live in a generation that is obsessed with admiring anointed people and just believing that you just bring 1,000 or 5,000 and people just lay hands and transfer everything let me be honest with you my dear people there is a track record in the spirit that you cannot buy with money it is a track record you have to pay with God you want to tell the sick be healed and they are healed you want a generation to hear you is more than the ability to speak English no there must be a hunger I'm praying that something will land on someone this morning that every laziness that will not allow you to take God seriously and if there is any spirit fighting your spiritual progress in the name of Jesus I declare those altars are scattered right now hear me there are many of you you are the first person to rise in your family to this level now you want to go down and allow the devil destroy your family God is counting on you and saying you are the one your mama was praying for you for 20 years before you arrived the decision 
to make spiritual progress when it is time to pray you lock yourself every day you are doing it you are signing that spiritual register the realm of the spirit is seeing you demons are seeing you principalities are seeing you they are bearing witness to the fact that you are preparing for destiny are we still together in one minute while you are standing i like you to pray lord every laziness every laxity in the name of jesus let me go let me go someone is praying a generation is waiting for me a generation is waiting for me i obtain grace kaparos ketebekata kambra katos kateleketa depending on my spiritual health depending on my spiritual advancement hallelujah in the name of Jesus please sit down very quickly sit down mm. number two number two the second Kali Salibarusia I just saw light I'm seeing the number 17 I just saw light coming please I want you to just help them 17 people I just saw the power of God like light just coming on them right now I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Lord where are these people that light that must rest upon your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ let it come upon your destiny right now let it come upon your let it come upon your destiny right now please help them just help those under the anointing let it come upon your destiny right now the Lord is bringing you into a new season please sit down and be very sensitive if you can just help those under the anointing hear me the Lord is speaking to someone here the Lord is saying I've been beckoning on you to come closer and to get deeper with me but right now while you are seated the fire of God right where you are just help them that fire is landing on your destiny right now there are ladies here you are carrying that fire there is a fire that has been looking for your abakatosh kedevadakata sit down please I have to hurry up please write just help those under the anointing we are going to pray the waters are already been stirred here number two the second decision that you must make is the decision to contend for superior belief systems the decision to contend for superior belief systems that is the second honorable decision you have to make for your destiny the decision to contend for superior belief systems through renewal and transformation write it down please the decision to contend for superior belief systems you will never rise above and beyond your mindset you will never rise above and beyond your belief system your belief system represents your paradigm your belief system represents your viewpoint it says son of man what seest thou it says the rod of an almond tree and he said you have seen correctly i will hasten my word jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 10 to 12 i will hasten my word that you have seen to perform 
in proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 write it down for reference three scriptures proverbs 23 7 proverbs 4 23 and psalm 78 and verse 41 i'm hurrying up for time proverbs 23 and verse 7 proverbs 4 and 23 it says as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will become so he already is the bible equates your destiny to the quality of your thoughts every one of us here comes from different backgrounds sociologically speaking spiritually speaking economically speaking and these contexts they have a way of conditioning our mind was it not nathaniel that said about jesus can anything good come out from nazareth you may have come from a background where no one has risen you have never seen favor in display you have never seen speed and chances are that when god wants to favor you when god wants to bring speed there is no provision in your mindset to allow that happen a man can limit god psalms 78 and verse 41 i found that scripture and it has blessed me through the years they limited the holy one by saying can god make a wilderness can god make a way in the wilderness as powerful as god is as mighty as god is the mindset of an individual can limit his performance in the life of that person so the second decision is the decision to contend for superior beliefs i told you that everything you are looking for is also looking for you but not this version of you there is a version of you your future is looking for you have to evolve into that version you have to grow through renewal and transformation mentality mentality can decide the quality of destiny number three the third decision that you must make is the decision to discover and fulfill your god-given assignment write it down please the third quality decision you need to make is the decision to discover and fulfill your god-given assignment in other words the decision to live a purpose driven life john 4 34 please help us media the decision to discover and fulfill your assignment john 4 34 jesus said unto them the bible says my meat that means my satisfaction my fulfillment is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work everybody say to do and finish one more time say to do and finish in hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 paul was speaking and he made a quotation lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god it has been written concerning every one of us but whether you fulfill what was written or not is it is it's a subject for another day make up your mind to discover and to fulfill your assignment now we don't have all the time but can i have two or three people here just any two no you, you see just two or three people here let me use someone please give me anything to use a rod a mic just anything a book anything at all now all of you stand watch this you stand here you stand here watch this this is a baton please stand in front here sir stand in front there you stand in front of him now watch this this is a baton 
and God has given it to him. Hold it, sir. My friend, all of you stretch your hands backward, ready to receive. This man, if he runs his destiny well, he will be able to hand it over to this man. Is that true? If this man fails, run well, sir, and hand it over to him. You see that? His efficiency has made another person to fulfill destiny. But you, sir, refuse to run. This man has refused to discover his place and run with that baton. He's wasting the destiny of another person because he has refused to run. Every time you refuse to find your place in life, someone else is a relay. You are not the only one running. If God raised you to be a man of God, all the pastors that were supposed to come up after you and under you because of your inability to answer the call you are punishing another man's destiny if god has raised you to be a kingdom financier he raised you to be a financier so that that church will now be built because of your refusal to obey your assignment that church is never built and the souls that should be saved in that church never come to Jesus there are implications when you do not fulfill destiny please give him back again let's repeat it now this represents the generation of our grandfathers and great grandfathers in the faith they handed it over give it to him there is a generation running with this now now my friend when he gives it to you refuse to collect it now he's giving it to him this is what most of our generation are doing collect it take the mantle of healing the mantle of breakthrough collect it and we're saying no we're busy typing phones typing internet making all kinds of things collect this time is going destinies are suffering and this man is refusing my friend walk away and leave him this is what is happening our fathers are passing this baton and saying young people a time will come you will be the one on the stage prepare collect this mantle collect this baton in business in ministry what you are refusing but in this conference my brother run back and come and collect this run with speed and come and pick it this is what is happening to someone now lift your voice in one minute and declare i must fulfill destiny go ahead and pray go ahead and pray from the depth of your heart i must find my place in life find my place in destiny and fulfill the same Jesus name we pray for in Jesus name we pray I've given you three decisions now number one to make exceptional spiritual progress number two to contend for superior belief systems number three the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment number four are we still here the fourth decision according to third john 1 verse 2 third john 1 verse 2 the decision to be healthy now look up this may look like a very simple decision but it's a very very serious decision the decision to be healthy your physical well-being is important for the fulfillment of your destiny because no spirit is a legal occupant in the earth without a body you need a healthy body it says beloved i wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health prosper and be in health the decision to be healthy can i tell you this there are many people today who are 40 years but respectfully speaking are looking 80 years 
because they spend their lives deteriorating their health carelessness over their bodies eating anything drinking anything I myself did not used to pay that much attention to my health I was not careless with my health but I didn't give it that level of intention especially those who work in miracles signs and wonders usually they ignore their health just because the anointing flows through them to others you must be careful you have a responsibility under God to walk in health it is the reason why vices like smoking and drinking and liquor and all these kinds of things are dangerous because it's a way of mismanaging your health a body has thou prepared for me if you do not have a body even if you have a vision it will not come to pass did you hear what I said if you do not have a body even if you have a vision it will not come to pass your vision needs a body to find expression that means from today you must make a decision that i am going to be healthy part of the ways that you choose life is to choose to be healthy you wouldn't believe it i'm not a medical doctor but i can tell you this your health starts from the discipline to take clean water clean water alone can save you many many years of degrading your health the moment god begins to bless you you get a job or money begins to come don't just invest in clothes invest in your health if you buy a nice cloth a nice designer in a body that is dying soon people will come and carry it away because you will be dead hear me one time i went to minister in this nation and one of the fathers of faith drew me into his office and he made a statement that i would never forget it was a powerful conference and he drew me into his office and he said my son let me teach you something pay attention to your health he said africans kill their prophets and it was it it made such an impact in my life now it's good to stretch yourself don't be lazy but you must know when you stretch yourself beyond limit there are many people today it is not demons that are destroying their health it is just because they do not pay attention can i tell you this haven't encouraged you to be hard working let me be sincere with you when you are tired rest when you are hungry eat learn this especially for young people because we are surrounded by so many people who want to show that you can stretch in the spirit we we derive a lot of pride from showing that you have stamina in the spirit there are people today who have ulcer and it's because they did not know how to fast with wisdom there are people today who are destroying themselves. There are people today who have gone to pray and stretch themselves beyond proportion and it affected their brains. They have bipolar. Right now they are in the hospital. There is a balance to everything. The Bible says to do everything with moderation. Pay attention to your health. Do not feel embarrassed and don't feel less of a Christian if you are investing in your health. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Humorously, I'm seeing that there are meals being served while the message is going on. And some of you are almost embarrassed. You don't want to collect it. Collect it all. Collect it all. Oh, they are not serving. Oh, I see. Oh, they are just positioned. Don't, don't collect it now. <laughs> But when it's time to collect it collect it yes after the message you have it i know some of you will feel like you are falling your hands spiritually how could i be so anointed when jesus was hungry he ate when jesus was tired he slept please 
eat and rest in this kingdom we live by bread and words bread and words not word alone bread and words please sit down we have to wrap up are you learning now very quickly number five the fifth quality decision you must make in order to emerge as a champion and influence is the decision to be financially independent write it down i hope you are not shouting just because you like money the decision to be financially independent you know can i be honest with you many people shy away from the reality of this because and i know why usually when it has to do with the issue of finances there are two groups in the body of christ there are those who ignore it and say it's not important don't worry you just serve god he will sort your life and then there are those who almost it is like an extension of lust and carnality and everything is money 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 from start to finish both are wrong but i can tell you based on the authority of scripture the decision to be financially independent is a noble decision and it's also a spiritual decision proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 may you never forget this scripture for the rest of your life in jesus name proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 why do you need to contend for financial independence here is one of the reasons the bible says the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender did you hear that a rich man will rule over the poor even if he's a poor prayer warrior even if he's a poor fasting giant for as long as you are poor you will never be able to taste the corridors of power and influence it takes economic empowerment to lift the name of jesus the name of jesus is very heavy it takes resources to lift it up not join the ignorance where people find comfort in believing that everything will be all right if you are not financially empowered what we challenge in the body of Christ is lost an affinity towards material things not the availability of resources by the time money becomes a god to you by the time you become obsessed with money even to the detriment of your relationship with jesus now there is a problem materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials on your relationship with jesus and you don't need to have money to be materialistic there are many poor people who are materialistic they don't just have the money to manifest it yet please pay attention to this there are many people who are called of god today but they are unable to do much for the kingdom this conference right now is happening because there are financial resources to drive the conference it is not only because jesus is here jesus is here and we are grateful but what if the gen and the sound system goes off and you cannot hear what if the lights are out this magnificent um ground that we all are sitting here it took resources to make it happen as i have toured around this amazing camp i have seen all kinds of projects ongoing it takes resources if you embrace poverty you will also embrace weakness can i tell you this make up your mind that what my parents could not give me they may be sincere people they did the best with what they knew to do but in the name of jesus i'll be able to give my children what i did not receive don't transfer the same pain and hardship to your children make up your mind that under my watch the house of the lord will never suffer because these hands will bring resources for the lifting of the name of jesus the decision 
to be financially independent write this for reference as we prepare to wrap up ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 6 i'm telling you this scripture is a very powerful and prophetic scripture ecclesiastes chapter 9 maybe we should read it i know our time is up but let me just read it very quickly fish ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 we are reading just four verses 13 to 16. ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 16. the bible shows us in a very graphic way the danger of not contending for financial independence this wisdom have i seen also under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom read on with me now it says there was a little city and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it 15. now there was found in it a poor wise man who was found in that city a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man it's in your bible 16 then said i wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard it takes wisdom and wealth to be had are we learning make up your mind that you are going to walk in the reality of the blessings of the Lord not for some competitive selfish carnal reason no I am telling you this when God grants do you know we are not teaching on finances here but many of the people who talk on finances with, with all due respect, largely many people are not getting it the way it should be taught. This is why it keeps fueling carnality and lust in people. You prosper even as your soul prospers. When there is anything wrong with your soul, everything you have gathered or acquired is nonsense. But let me give you this. There are only two assignments of money in the life of an individual. Number one, the first assignment of financial resources is as a tool for time redemption. The first assignment of money in your life is to redeem time. The unit of destiny is time. You can use money to buy time. Number two, the second assignment of money in the life of the believer a kingdom-minded believer it's for efficiency so money only has two assignments in a believer's life time redemption and efficiency if god grants you resources and you buy a car what is that car doing redeeming time that's it if god grants you an opportunity and you move from a tenant to a landlord it has only helped to make your life efficient instead of smuggling six children in one room now you have a three four five bedroom you can even create a prayer room you can create all kinds of things so it gives you the convenience to live an efficient life everybody say time redemption one more time say time redemption say efficiency this is why believers desire the availability of financial resources for time redemption and for efficiency if you are able to pay the school fees of your children without thinking about it and you can send them to any school without the psychological stress of raising school fees one naira one naira per time it has helped your life to be efficient so you can focus on the things of God as a man of God when God blesses you financially he has given you time so you can lock yourself for three days seeking his face and not worry about bills efficiency when people are taught prosperity from a correct kingdom perception or perspective they become blessed and their hearts are never connected to those things 
finally have we been blessed so far the only promise you are going to give me is that you will use everything that I'm teaching you here that that the next time God will grant us the grace to see when I look at you where you used to be I will not be able to find you there again that you will be a thousand times over the final decision pay attention our time is up the sixth is the decision to build quality destiny relationships write it down ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 to 12 please give us that scripture the decision to build quality destiny relationships can i tell you this the command be fruitful also means be relational because the only way to be fruitful is through relationships it takes a husband and his wife to have a child two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor we are reading to verse 12 verse 10 now two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor verse 10 says for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone the key word is alone when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up uh-huh two more verses again if two lie together they have heat but how can one be warm alone verse 12 i wish you can see it for us to read together verse 12 and if one prevail against him two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly or easily broken look at me one of the greatest things that you can do with your life and the times that god has given you is to invest in building quality relationships can i be honest with you many people do not have relationships that were intentionally built many people have circumstantial relationships circumstances just brought certain people into your life there are three levels of relationships number one there are general relationships you meet people every day and the bible mandates you love them believers non-believers alike you meet them every day number two there are seasonal relationships for instance your classmates your schoolmates within the time you are together in that institution or that training taking that course you are together and you may be friends but the third and the highest level they are called destiny relationships or covenant relationships these are people who believe what you believe the foundational pillars of your convictions are also what they believe and you have a covenant of fellowship that you are going to be there for one another through the thick and thin you will not just be there to stand together that when they are on the ground you will come and stand by them and help them and lift them can i tell you this woe betides a man if everybody around you is a psychophant just looking for your money or your titles or anointing they will tell you because men are intrinsically selfish however there are still sincere people and my prayer is not just that you pray and say god give me one be one first hallelujah look up please we're wrapping up when jesus walked upon the earth for as long as he was celebrity jesus there were crowds looking for him some were looking for him for food some were eyeing all kinds of things hoping that one day when he becomes king of kings and lord of lords he will put james and peter all kinds of motives but when jesus handed himself to die all of them ran away when jesus was going to golgotha my question where was blind bartimaeus 
where was the woman with the issue of blood where was even lazarus who was raised from the dead everybody ran away can i be honest with you you must obtain the grace and the courage at this level in life to edit your relationships don't treat everybody the same they are not the same categorize your relationships into outer court inner court and most holy place not everybody should have that kind of access to your life are you learning wisdom here someone comes into your life and in five minutes you've told him everything about your destiny you've told him everything about your past you've told him that oh your dad has a problem with your mom and tomorrow they go around and betray you and backstab you and destroy you you need wisdom it is not every visitor that comes to your house that you take to your bedroom no there are visitors who will stand at the gate there are others who will come to the living room but there are others you can literally take them to your bedroom and sit down because you know that even if you are in prison they will come and stand with you and say we die together can i be sincere with you this is one of the lessons that i have learned respectfully speaking in the life of our fathers of faith they may not have many people around their lives but my goodness god has given them the gift of men there are men who will stay like the mighty men of david in the cave of adulam let me ask you a question as i round up if you are in trouble today god forbid is there anybody in your life that you can call by 2 a.m and say sincerely there is an issue with my rent now it's not like i am jealous and the person says over my dead body for as long as you are alive i'm alive i will not see you go through this hear me if there is nobody like that in your life you are sitting on a time bomb can i be i want to be honestly even when saul wanted to kill david and frustrated him david said is there any man in the house of saul that i may show kindness for jonathan's sake i have learned this as a lesson gleaning from the wisdom of the fathers can i be honest with you this is an assignment to everyone here write a list of the five most important men in your life people you know today who love you and will sacrifice anything for you invest in those relationships don't generalize and treat everybody the same way no there are people today if you call and say i i need i need five hundred thousand they will tell you well i will help you how could you put them in the same category with someone who can stab you with a knife even if they give you learn wisdom i'm teaching you this there are people today if you call them and say look i see that lust is already growing in me pride is already growing in me they'll say no not when i'm there let's declare a three-day fast i will stand with you i will pray with you can i be honest with you as you are rising in life and in leadership you must start praying not for a crowd but for this man lord from the crowd select this man bring them to my life there are men who will vow and say even if you go to be with the lord today your children will not beg for bread when they are alive can i be honest with you there are many of our parents in old age today they did not spend their days searching for quality destiny relationships and investing in it and you would see some of them move and they will tell you i lived in us for 10 years i know this one i know this one but they are still in a position today where not one of their children can have a job anything money can buy relationships can also buy relationships are currencies don't use money alone to buy things use relationships to buy things this is one lesson i've learned in ministry as we pray man of god young man young woman hear the word of the lord it is time for you to build quality relationships 
this is one of the reason why god brings a convergence of a conference like this so that you can have men and women some of you your destiny helper is the person seated near you he may not be wearing the kind of shoe and the kind of cloth you see be careful where you look down on people you may be looking down on the next 10 years of your life learn to honor men learn to respect people respect those above you respect your contemporaries respect your subordinates and you have bought the future I set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing I set before you these six master decisions that decide the destinies of men I cannot force you but my advice even this afternoon is choose life rise up on your feet someday you will listen to this message again but this time around you will listen to it with your children all around your table someday you will listen to this message but you will listen to it with millions and billions in your bank accounts someday you will listen to this message again but you will listen to it with mantles upon your head someday you will listen to this message but you will listen to this message alongside the congregation of a crowd like this listening to you but i pray for you that someday you will not listen to this message and regret and say why did i not make a decision one prayer point i speak over your life and we're done for this session father i obtain grace from heaven you have given me the keys that can change my life i obtain grace lift your voice and pray i obtain grace i obtain grace the lord has spoken once i pray that you will hear and hear again go ahead and pray that decisions decide destiny the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress the decision to contend for superior belief systems the decision to discover and fulfill your god-given assignment to live a purpose-driven life the decision to contend for your health and your physical well-being the decision to be financially empowered to be financially and economically independent finally the decision to build quality destiny relationships hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I appreciate the time I apologize I know I've stretched us a bit but I want to pray one prayer right now for sake of time I promised you that I was going to pray for the sick sadly we may not be able to do that I'm sure that another time God will grant us grace but I want to speak over your life and your destiny I want you to believe it men are made by the words that come upon them you don't have to kneel Please, I want you to believe we did not invent this strategy the fathers have spoken over us and it has brought us to the grace that we we have today this is a baton we are not the inventors of it we only received it too I want to pray for someone maybe not everybody but I know that there is someone scattered in this congregation who has fasted who has prayed who has prepared their hearts and you are saying sir you don't have to come out you don't have to come out right where you are, I want to pray for you even those under the anointing just help them as I pray you don't have to bring them out but please whether you are an usher or not anyone under the anointing just help them I want to pray for you truly there are graces and there are mantles we are made by the graces that rest upon us I do not want to end this session without speaking over your life I want you to receive every prayer 
I want to activate certain dimensions in your spirit man some of you have seen this in your dreams some of you have seen it in your visions some of you know that the hand of God is upon you right now I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead Leketesh at the count of three that fire let it come upon you and ignite you set you on fire to do marvelous things are you ready one two three take that fire right now take that fire right now take that fire right now that fire right now help them please now hear me hear me I don't know how possible this will be listen I've graciously been given about five minutes or so now please if someone is under the anointing I just want to bring them out here just out here if you can it will require both the ushers and every other person I want to pray for you at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus the name that is above all names hear me as you shout that name such fire will ignite you and you will be set ablaze for many of you there will be activations of the gift of the spirit are you ready now at the count of three I stand upon the grace of our father and I declare to you let there be that impartation one two three shout Jesus take that grace take that anointing take that grace that empowerment fire upon your destiny fire upon your life in the name of Jesus you will never be the same never be the same never be the same I ignite your prayer life I ignite your destiny by the power that raised Christ from the dead step into a new season in the name of Jesus step into a new season now hear me in Jesus name now listen carefully please help them we're praying hear me there are people here the call of God is upon your life and God has been working upon you I want to pray right now that fire is coming upon you apostolic fire prophetic fire at the count of three anyone here who has the call of God one two three take that fire 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 in the mighty name of Jesus hear me in this end time there are women that are rising up after the order of Deborah there are women that are warriors in the spirit I pray for you wherever you are may this fire come upon you right now may this fire come upon you right now some of you hear me some of you are kingdom financiers you represent the next generation of men and women that God will be trusting with resources I don't know where you are but everywhere you are under the sound of my voice I stretch my hands may that anointing come upon you right now receive that anointing now receive that anointing now receive that anointing now you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed Yeah. 
Listen, listen, please look at me. At the count of three, you are going to shout that name again. Every embargo of delay sitting on anyone's the to say you will not go forward by the privilege of the grace of our fathers in the name of Jesus. At the count of three, may the mantle for speed. Come on your destiny. Are you ready to shout Jesus? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Delay, be broken. Delay, be broken. Delay in destiny fulfillment. Be broken. Delay, be broken. Upon your destiny, speed upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. There is a grace for prayer that makes a man's altar to come on fire. I don't know who did prays for this grace, but I stretch my hands. Katasko delegata. The grace for prayer and intercession. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. The fire upon your altar. Let it keep burning day and night. There is a grace for favor. Hear me. There is a real grace for favor that can make men come to attend to your needs i stretch my hands you may not have an uncle you may not have an auntie you may not have a sponsor but right now in the name of jesus upon this altar i prophesy any destiny helper that needs to arise and locate your destiny i command may they find you now Hallelujah. Please go back. Please go back. If you are not under the anointing, just go back. Please. Don't worry. Just go back. Everyone will receive. The only people out here are those under the anointing. Don't worry. Now hear me. I was given five minutes to pray for the sick. I want you to lay your hands, any part of your body where you are trusting God for miracles. At subsequent sessions, you can testify. But I want to pray for you right now. Lay your hands very quickly. I believe in miracles. I want you to agree with me as I pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity plaguing your body, your destiny, I command that it lets you go right now in Jesus' name. Now I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Migraine headaches be healed in Jesus' name. Blood, help them please. Blood conditions. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every genotype here, sickle cell anemia, we change that genotype right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone under the sound of my voice called barren, I stand upon this altar and I speak over your life. Nine months from now, return with your miracle children.
every blood disease every blood condition be healed right now in Jesus name partial or complete deafness be healed right now in Jesus name partial or complete blindness be healed right now in the name of Jesus heart palpitations be healed in Jesus name ulcers be healed in Jesus name the Lord is healing someone of pile pile be healed right now in Jesus name whether I mention your case or not every ailment in your body let it bow to the name of Jesus right now hallelujah please lift your hands we're wrapping up let me speak over your destiny every door that has refused to open over your life and destiny right now I stand upon the privilege of the grace of our father and in the name of Jesus I speak to that door a father be open now doors of destiny be open now hear me every embargo of shame and reproach over anyone's life and any family by the mystery of the blood of Jesus we tear off that veil of shame from your life failure at the edge of breakthrough that you always see it but never handle it right now in the name of Jesus everything your eyes sees may your hands handle it in Jesus name I pray for those of you who are students hear me if you are a student here in the name that is above all names the finishers anointing the grace to finish with honor I impart that grace upon you in Jesus name some of you because of the circumstances that have happened around your life there has been delays around your life by now you would have gone far but something delayed you I don't know who has been delayed in life by prophecy I push you to the next season of your life <laughs> hallelujah finally by the privilege of God's election of grace and the honor of standing on this altar let me join my faith with your intercontinental pastor and our father in the Lord to prophesy over the youth the entire youth arm of the redeemed Christian Church of God everything that is alive grows therefore I stand on this altar and I declare by this time next year be ten times better than you are by this time next year be ten times better than you are regardless the region regardless the province be ten times better than you are spiritually financially hallelujah hear me and out of the people standing here may it please the Lord to raise the next generation of leaders in this nation hallelujah 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 hallelujah